We're about to watch 15 year old Wall Beanie race his KCM 125 at the Revo ACU British Motocross Championship in the MX2 class against the fastest pros in the nation. This is going to be fun. So, Wall, stepping up from an 85 last year into the MX2 Pro class. What's that jump uh, been like for you so far, one round in? Yeah, it's been difficult for sure. Um, it's a big jump up and stuff, but I suppose uh, it's a good way of getting experience and a uh, head start against the other riders in their youth classes. 250s are hard work for sure, because there's a lot more bottom end power and stuff compared to 125, but obviously, um, 125 is a nice bike to ride. I've rode 250 before and I much prefer two strokes. So, yeah, you can make them sin, and especially around a track like this, it'd be nice yeah. to ride. Yeah, so, that's, um, that's my next question. For, obviously, at Fox Hills today, you won both races here last year on, in the big wheel class, didn't you? Yeah. So, you obviously like this track. Looking forward to it, Alex. So. Yeah, I can't wait. Um, I love this track. It's uh, definitely one of my favourite tracks. Definitely the favourite on the calendar. Um, I like hard pack and rutty tracks. So. Um, big jumps. Yeah, nice <laughs> jumps, big hills, so it's, it's just a perfect track and I'm open for a perfect day to be fair. For Wall, obviously he's stepped up, he's up into the Pro Brits Championship. Uh, it's a tough call on a 125, obviously he's only a young kid, he's just turned 15, so there's a lot that he can learn. Um, and I think that by him being in the Pro Brits Championship, even things like how they're um, setting the bikes up in, in the holding area, what they're doing before the start, there's little rituals that he can pick up from that he would then take to the, the other races like the EMX 125s. Don't forget there's people in there that are world class riders and for a 15 year old, even if um, he can hang on to them for one corner, two corners, a straight, whatever it may be, he's picking up little bits out there that he will then put into his foundations to become an adult rider and using the adult tracks, adult lines, adult kind of set up and scenery and that little bit of knowledge that he can kind of gain from all of those riders, he will just keep storing and storing and storing and then eventually it will all come out and it will be good. Over the past eight years that I've known Walt Beanie, we've watched him grow up on this very channel. It's almost hard to believe that that little ripper is now lining up for his first season of pro racing alongside the best in the business. What a journey it's been. So here we go, MX2 getting ready for their first race of the weekend. So the board flips the five, we are about to go racing for the first time today here in the MX2 class. The gates have dropped, who's going to grab that all important hole shot here? It's a tight left hand at 180 degrees, looks like all of the runners are through safely. And charging down into the valley for the first time they come. But we keep an eye out for our 125 hero, Wolpini. There he is going around the outside, using two stroke lines, trying to get around some of these four strokes. He's got Louis Kessel right there ahead of him. Wolpini, just 15 years old, racing the MX2 Pro Class after jumping up from the big wheel 85 last year. This is a big leap, a steep learning curve. And the young lad has thrown himself right in at the deep end. At the moment, he's got Louis Kessel and Bailey Johnson just ahead of him. Gallon Mitchell not too far ahead either. Oh, and just up the inside of him, the 123 of Rossi Beard sneaks up the inside of Walbini. We've actually got Rossi Beard, Bailey Johnson and Walbini in a row here. All three of these riders, former British Youth Motocross champions in recent years. So what a nice little battle we got going on here. And Walbini makes a move on Bailey Johnson on this opening lap of action. So. Beanie on his 125 KTM, charging forward, making passes, doing it the hard way on the Little Ripper. They jump down the big hill here at Fox Hill for the first time today. Beanie up the inside, tries to make a sneaky move on Rossi Beard there. Wasn't quite close enough to make it happen. Up the big step up they go. Oh, Beanie gets cross rutted and then he gets clattered by Bailey Johnson that looks like. So Wal Beanie and Bailey Johnson, two rivals from the Small Wheel 85 class just a few seasons ago, hit the floor together here. They're going to have to come back through the pack in a fierce charge now. This is going to be a long race for the two former rivals. Luckily both riders seem to be uninjured, they've remounted 
and the charge is back on now. But they've got work to do. Beanie launching up the big step up here. His nickname has always been Wild Roll Beanie. He's not afraid to send it, that's for sure. Beanie quickly onto the back of the pack now. So he's, he's made up some time very quickly here. And he's making passes already. He's got the 54 of Dylan Spencer ahead of him now, all in white. So what can he do? About the number 54 machine. He's got a trainer riders just ahead of him, actually. So the carrot is dangling for sure for young Wolbini here. So Spencer, and that looks like that could be the 470 of Tom Hughes. In a fierce tussle just ahead of Wolbini. Beanie trying to capitalize on this mayhem. Couldn't quite make it happen right there. But he's on the charge, that's for sure. He's making that little one, two, five sing around the awesome Fox Hill Motor Park here. By far one of the most historic and iconic tracks on the British motocross calendar. And Beanie up the inside. What a nice little block pass move at the bottom of the hill. He's hanging off the back of that one, two, five up the steep Fox Hill. And he makes a pass stick. So he's got the one, one, eight of Jaden Murphy ahead of him now. So it's pass bar action through the valley between Walt Beanie and Jaden Murphy. Here they go. Oh, what a pass from Walt Beanie there to make that happen. Full commitment at the end of the valley there to close the door and make the pass stick. And another position gain for the 125 hero, Wild Walt Beanie. He's close as they launch down the hill, the big steep hill at Foxes. The cameras do not do that justice. That is scarily steep. These hills are scarily steep. And up he goes on his 125, hanging off the back of it. Into the valley they come. Well, Billy swings wide, cuts across. A nice drive. Launches down the hill over the head of Dylan Spencer. Oh, that's close. And then up they go. Spencer shuts the door for now, but he knows Walt Beanie is there. He knows the 125 is lurking, looking to make a pass happen. Beanie up the inside on the final corner. <laughs> he tries to stuff in to make a block pass. But Spencer says, no, not this time, son. And it's a drag race around the back of the start straight. Well, Beanie swings wide, cuts to the inside, and he shuts the door. Oh, an aggressive pass from the young 125 racer there, and he makes a pass stick. What a move from Wild Beanie. So the charge forward continues for Wild Wild Beanie. What a ride so far from the 125 warrior. He now lays chase to his former nemesis in the small world 85 class. These two did battle for the title back in. 2018. That's Walt Beanie and Bailey Johnston. Like we said, Beanie now laying chase to the 119 of Johnston to move up another position. Beanie does have to be careful. This is the number 74 of Tom Murphy. He's charging forward as well. So Murphy lurking there just behind Beanie, looking dangerous. Oh, and Johnston goes down, lays it down in the deep right there. A gift for Wolbini, but he can't rest easy because remember that number 74 of Tom Murphy is lurking right there on his rear wheel. So no rest quite yet for Wolbini. He's inside the top 25 now. So a strong, strong ride from Wolbini after that first lap mishap. He's got another one of those pesky four strokes. Hounding him, hounding his rear wheel, playing chase. And for the first time, this Moto Beanie having to ride defensively. So far, so good for Beanie. He's fending off the attacks from Tom Murphy, the number 74 machine. Oh, Tom Murphy sneaks up the inside. A nice move, to be fair, from the older rider there, making a move up the inside of Wal Beanie. Caught the youngster off guard and makes a move to demote Wal Beanie a position. A handful of laps to go left in this race. Can Wolbini hang on to the 24th position? Hang on to a top 25 in what is only his third ever Pro MX2 race. No matter the result of this, Wolbini has to be proud of himself. Has to be proud of the gutsy ride that he's put in. Remember, he's underpowered. He's underage. 
but he's got the heart of a lion. While Beanie has found himself on the rear wheel of Rossi Bid, a forward British shoot motocross champion himself, and Beanie tries an inside move there in the final corner, but can't quite make it happen. They take the one lap to go board. Beanie has to be careful as well, he has to be mindful that Dave Johnson is lurking there. But around the outside of Rossi Beard goes Wolbini to advance up a position further. But there is Bailey Johnson with one lap to go. Bailey Johnson is on the charge. He made that mistake earlier, remember. And he's come back with a vengeance. He's looking to make a last ditch move, a last lap move on his former nemesis, Wolbini. But can the 125 Warrior hang on for just a handful of corners? We're about to find out. Two corners left to go. Beanie launches down the big step down. On the gas, up over the big step up. Two corners to go. Can he hang on? Can he defend the inside from his former nemesis, Bailey Johnson? One corner to go. To the inside goes Roll Beanie. And across the line, he hangs on to it. A top 25 position for our 125 hero. And a nice show of respect there as they cross the line between the two former youth motocross rivals. Oh, it was brutal out there. First lap, I was uh, I got a decent start, like a uh, terrible jump, and then I sort of squared up onto the inside and got alongside some of the riders. Um, went wide, and I was running probably top 15. And um, yeah, no, I was pushing through. I had a few fast boys come by, but then I got a few of the others like just got to, uh, back and forth. And then uh, yeah, no, I just got knocked sort of and cross rutted. Yeah, I got knocked by another right, rider and cross rutted, and uh, yeah, went over the bars and then got like run over sort of thing. There's a bit of a pile up, um, hurt my thumb a bit, but. No, just push through for the next one, no quitting. If you made it this far, obviously you're watching this uh, little mini kind of documentary kind of thing on Wall. Um, my name's Jordan Booker. I um, used to race, run a shop now called Store 114, and I'm, uh, yeah, helping Wall out this season. Basically, I've been aware of Wall for a few years now. Uh, mostly, I was actually here last year and watched him drop it first lap. Whole shot, he whole shot a race on a big wheel, dropped it first lap, and um, got up and he was still in the lead halfway around the first lap, so. Saw huge potential in him, obviously, from that moment there. You know, it's helped, nice to help get into the races and help him hopefully reach his potential. I was trying to find Wall all morning, actually, thinking where would he be parked, where would he be parked. Walked everywhere and I thought, oh, I know where he'd be parked. Right in the furthest back corner. Um, so that's just typical how he does things. He's very, like, low-key, almost under the radar. and. It's cool, it's like, you know, there's lots of flash kids out there, they've got the big canvases, they've got shiny loads of bikes and the parents are really into it. Like, I'm not saying his, his parents are definitely really into it in terms of support and what they can do, but, uh, you know, maybe not quite got the financial capabilities of some people. So they're here, he's here in the Sprinter, he's got his race bike, he's got a really good group of people around him and he kind of just gets the job done, you know, he's the type of person that he'd drop it in the first turn. If his front wheel was bent completely up, he would just crack on and it wouldn't phase him. That's kind of, what I see in him, a bit of grit, he's got something a little bit special, so he's digging deep, he's, in a, he's really up against it, peeing in the wind, as some might say, but it's not easy on a track like this, you're giving up at least five, six seconds a lap on a 125 compared to a 250F, and um, if you then actually take that into account and look at the times and stuff like that, he's doing all right. It's the last chance for glory this weekend. The stage is set for the second and final moto of the day here at Fox Hill. Who's going to grab the all-important hole shot? The gates have dropped. Oh, and it's not a great jump for our 125 hero, Walbini. But there's carnage in the first corner. Riders down everywhere. But Walbini picks his way through cleanly. Smart moves from the youngster. The dust kicking up here is going to be sketchy on this first lap. The riders picking their way through carefully. Through the valley they come for the first time. Well, Beanie finding himself in the mid pack once again with some work to do. He wants to reach his targets, reach his goals for the day. He's got some good company up there. The 
24, 26 of Conrad Mews, the series points leader, and one of the fastest MX2 races in the world. There's no question about that. So let's see if Wolbini can follow one of his boyhood heroes through the pack here. And this is absolute mayhem on this opening lap of action here in the final moto of the day at Fox Hill. Wolbini just trying to carefully pick his way through. Keep out of harm's way on this first lap of action. He powers back up Fox Hill for the first time. And over to the far side of the track. Beanie goes to the inside. There's a deep. Oh, there's a down rider. Jack Lindsay potentially on the Pico Husqvarna. Well, Beanie gets caught up there. Pushing him down the order, leaving him all by himself. He's got major work to do now. He wants to get back in the mix, get back in the fight in this moto. So it's going to be a long race ahead, a long race for Wolbini now. So Wolbini Lane chases the pack ahead. Remember, he's one of only a handful of two strokes in this race. And most of those two strokes will be 252 strokes to double the capacity of the bike that Wolbini's riding. But either way, Wolbini slicing through the field. He makes a pass out at the bottom of the hill. Remember that was his favourite place to make a move in race number one. So the little 125 might be at a disadvantage around this track here today. But Wolbini doesn't mind a bit of extra work as he cutting his teeth, learning his trade here in 2022. His first season racing the pro class at the British Motocross Championship. And Beanie has quickly found himself at the rear end of the pack. He's got fights ahead of him now that he can try and make passes on just like that. He makes a move on the 338 of Ben White. Down into the valley he drops once again. Oh, a mistake there. Just losing a the front end in one of those deep ruts. And Beanie goes down again. So this has been a disastrous start to the second moto. And all that work has just been undone. So the stage has been reset for Beanie. He's going to have to do it all again now. He's now got the 118 of Jaden Murphy ahead of him. As they drop down into the valley. Beanie looking to make a pass on the 118 machine. Over the first jump here in the valley. Big stretch for the 125, and then we've got a nice little double here at the end. Murphy protects the inside line. B swings wide, then cuts across the track. They both pull the trigger on the big step down and the big step up. Murphy looks over to defend the inside, but Beanie sneaks to the inside. Ruck, can he make it happen? Not this time. He cuts to the inside of the final corner, looking to make a block pass. But Murphy says, no, not this time, lad. Not quite yet. You're going to have to work harder than that. So here we come to Wolbini's favourite passing section of the track. Down the big hill. He jumps to the inside, hard on the brakes, to that inside line. He takes the line away from Jaden Murphy. And on the gas, up the hill goes Wolbini, hanging off the back of his KGM 125. And he makes the pass stick. That's impressive for a little 125 to outgun a 250F up that slick hill here at Fox Hill Motor Park. What a move by Wolbini. And as the laps count down, the time is running out for Wolbini to advance any further up through the field. But he still fights forward. Remember, he's underage, he's underpowered, but he's certainly got the heart of a lion. But it's good to see that he has never given up, even as we reach the dying moments of this race. He's still got riders ahead of him. And another pass made for our 125 hero. Like we said, he's not stopped charging all day long here as we reach the final lap of the day. Wolbini can be proud of his efforts today here at Fox Hill. He might not quite have hit his targets at the top 20 finish, but the effort that he's put in on that 125 machine has been heroic to say the least. He crosses the line for the final time here today. And we believe young Wolbini can hold his head high. Jesus, it's like, you know, he's, he just puts his every little effort into it and never, never quits and just keeps focusing, 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 you know? Oh, just heart goes out to the kid. It's just so much. Yeah, thanks, man. Thank you.
we just he's just one of those kids that you just got to get on with and he's just there and he just puts in 100 percent you can't you can't ask for any more than that brilliant brilliant yeah just a silly mistake just trying to push back through the pack obviously there's a big pile up on the start so a lot of people got held up in that so um yeah i tried coming back through the pack and just made a silly little mistake and then because I made that mistake, I landed on my arm. Funny, I picked up an injury, obviously, and um, yeah, no, it's hurting, but it's no excuses. It was just uh, one of them races that we need to forget about and just move on. Yeah, but um, overall, I'm happy with my speed and stuff. I just need to focus on my consistency because at the minute we're just not getting anywhere with how I'm crashing and stuff, and uh, I feel like there's a lot in the tank where I can show my full potential to an easy top 15 and just. It's not there yet, so we're just going to keep on plugging away in the gym and or on the bike, hope for some better results next round and for the ones to come. Thanks for everyone that supports me and stuff, and thanks to Max and his dad Phil for the opportunity to give me this. It was a nice, um, it was nice just to have someone that wanted to work with me and um, yeah, just see what I uh, like, go behind the scenes and stuff. So yeah, yeah, thank you to um, Max and Phil. My mechanic Max, all my sponsors, <coughs> my, my dad especially, and my mum, and uh, yeah, and all, everyone else that helps me out, just uh, wouldn't be able to be here without them, and Lee Dunham as well. So that's the day done and dusted here at round two of the 2022 Revo ACU British Motocross Championship fueled by Golf Race Fuels. It was a baptism of fire for our 15 year old racer, Wild Beanie. He's underage, he's underpowered, but he's got the heart of a line. He never gave up and he did us, the two-stroke family, proud around one of the most gnarly, most iconic and historic tracks here in the UK. So he's done us all proud. It was great to watch. I can't wait to see what he can do for the rest of the season and for the rest of his career. He's only young, so he's got a lot of time ahead of him to do some great things on a motocross bike. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to see more. Check out Woe on Instagram. I'll leave his details in the description down below. As always, you've been watching 999 Laser. My name is Max, and until next time, I'll see you at the track.